CS5, you get blazing fast speed and efficiency thanks to an all-new Mercury playback engine. You get 64-bit native processing. You get incredibly streamlined workflows, including the industry's best native tapeless support. You get innovative new rotoscoping and tracking tools, and you get open collaborative production and flexible video distribution. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the CS5 production premium suite. My friends, my name is Jason Levine, and I am a worldwide product evangelist for Adobe, healing people daily with the power of digital video and audio. And there are so many cool things to talk about, but I'm going to tell you about the five things you need to know about Production Premium CS5. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the Adobe Mercury Playback and Render Engine. Mercury because it's lightning fast, Mercury because it's fluid, and it will completely change the way you work inside of Premiere Pro offering you breakthrough performance in your HD production workflow. Now, one of the things, of course, because it was written from the ground up, this, of course, means that Premiere Pro itself is now a native 64-bit application. But what does this mean, 64-bit? We hear this all the time now. It means RAM allocation, RAM usage. All the RAM that you have in your system can now be leveraged to do more, to play back more in your timelines, to render faster than ever before, to share between applications and move files between applications faster and more efficiently than ever before. And if you've got an NVIDIA GPU accelerated card, we can now leverage GPU accelerated effects inside of Premiere Pro CS5. Things like Gaussian Blur, things like 32-bit Fast Color Corrector, things like the Ultra Keyer can all run. Throw them on your clips. Playback doesn't stop. So whether you're working with Red R3D, ABC Intra 100 Megabit, Sony XD Cam HD 50, or DPX files, or even DSLR formats from your Nikon or Canon cameras, these can all run together natively in the same timeline. This performance will knock you out! So the second feature I want to tell you about is so big, I'm not even quite sure how to introduce this. I mean, this is truly game-changing. This will truly change the way you work in After Effects forever. And the feature itself is the fact that After Effects is also now a 64-bit native application. Do you remember when you used to work with a 30-second 1080p clip and, and you could only RAM preview 3 or maybe up to 7 seconds? Well, now, leveraging all that RAM in your system, you can preview that full 30 seconds. You can preview 45 seconds. You can preview 100 seconds. It just matters how much RAM you have in the system. This will change the way you work forever. And don't forget, with all of this RAM, being able to leverage all of this RAM, things like dynamic link speed up as well, right? The ability to take Premiere Pro sequences and drop them inside an After Effects timeline, truly changing the game forever. The third feature I'm going to tell you about today is my absolute favorite feature in Production Premium CS5, and it deals with the process of rotoscoping in After Effects. I could talk a lot about this, but we know that rotoscoping is a really painful, slow process. Frame by frame, lots of drawing masks. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Allow me to show you and amaze you with the revolutionary roto brush. Now, effectively, if I wanted to roto out this character, I would start creating masks. I can simply take my roto brush tool, and I'm just going to draw a basic outline. You'll notice that it doesn't even have to be terribly accurate. What you're going to see is that right away, this mask looks pretty good. And you'll see that After Effects is automatically going to learn the next frame in the sequence. But this is After Effects CS5. We're 64-bit native. I can hit the space bar, and now you'll see that as this character is moving through the scene, it's rotoscoping it for me. Look, we're even seeing a section where his collar is coming into the frame. It wasn't even there moments ago. But with one simple click of the Refine Matte tool, you see that it's going to fix that matte up beautifully, and now we can treat just this character. So what I was thinking was maybe doing some color balance on this. I can drop it on here, and I can just pump up the saturation a bit, I also added a second layer of some outer glow, because you could never have enough outer glow. And again, I did this in seconds. If you've ever rotoscoped before, you know how long this process takes. It's the revolutionary roto brush in After Effects CS5. So the fourth feature I'm going to talk to you about today is something called our script to screen workflow. And this starts in Adobe Story. Now, Adobe Story is where you can actually create and build your script. You can even import scripts from popular script writing applications. Let's take a look. So now that we have our script in Adobe Story, what we can effectively do is take all of that information and leverage it as metadata throughout the entire production process, beginning by exporting this as an Adobe Story script file directly into OnLocation. 
Once in on location, all of those scenes will show up as shot placeholders, and we can take our tapeless cameras and begin shooting directly into those placeholders, which of course house all of that rich metadata. Everything from the actions to the scene names to the headings, it's all there. But it's even better, because now we can take those clips, bring it into Premiere Pro CS5, and perform speech analysis. Yes, it's a speech-to-text. Anywhere where you have spoken words in your clips, we can now transcribe those spoken words, and we can use the Adobe Story script file so that we get accuracy, incredible accuracy. Things like the actual names of the characters that are doing the talking. This is amazing, and this will once again allow you to now leverage all of this metadata and rich information directly out to Flash video so you can create a truly engaging, dynamic experience for your customers online. For my fifth and final feature, I get to talk to you about Photoshop CS5. Now, there are so many incredible features in here, but this one I think really applies to the visual designer, and that's the ability to use natural and realistic painting tools. Well, very simply now, you can take something like the mixer brush here, and immediately I can begin mixing pixels very naturally, just as if I were using an actual paintbrush on this digital still. This happens very quickly because remember, Photoshop CS5 is again a native 64-bit application on both platforms. And now I can take this high definition still and literally in seconds and turn it into something like this. It looks natural, it looks painted, it's glorious, beautifully stylized, changing the look whether we go out to DVD or online. It's the natural and realistic painting tools in Photoshop CS5. Well, my friends, my five minutes are up, and obviously that's just not enough time to talk about all the incredible features that we have in Production Premium CS5. So if you want to learn more, come visit us at adobe.com or come see me and my colleagues at adobetv.com. Creative Suite 5, a truly groundbreaking release. As an interactive or web designer or a web application developer, you're working hard to stay on top of evolving technologies. You're trying to find new ways to collaborate in workgroups. And now, more than ever, you need to measure the impact and value of the work that you create. Well, with CS5, you get a comprehensive set of Flash tools, the ability to share assets across products and a design without writing any code. And with the recent addition of Omniture, you'll be able to integrate analytics, tracking, and reporting. So let's take a look at what's hot in the CS5 Web Premium Suite. Hi, I'm Greg Roos, Principal Evangelist for Creative Suite Web Premium at Adobe. I would really love to show you every new feature in CS5 Web Premium, but I just don't have time. So what I want to do is focus in on five things that are really going to change the way that you work in CS5. Let's start with Flash Professional CS5. You'll notice that I have some text boxes here that are independent. So if the client makes a change, well, which they do, I want to have to do a lot of copying and pasting between these text boxes, but no longer. You see, with TLF, I can simply take these text boxes and begin to link them together. And now if the client needs a change and we want to shorten one of the text boxes, you can see that the text actually begins to flow between those individual boxes. Now, this is great, and it works not only with Roman language text, because we now support full vertical text as well as right-to-left text, like Japanese. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is the improvements we've made in Flash Professional CS5 to its coding environment. And now, right here within Flash Professional CS5, I can simply click to tell Flash I would like to actually do my editing over there in Flash Builder 4. And Flash will hand off the code to Flash Builder, even creating a project if it needs to. And when we're ready to package things up, I can also click a button right here in Flash Builder, and that will take me back over to Flash Professional, where I can do my export. And of course, I'm not just exporting for the web anymore. I'm exporting for a variety of screens, including one very popular one out there right now, the iPhone. Using the packager for iPhone that's included with Flash Professional CS5, I can set up my application to be turned into a native iPhone application and distributed via the App Store. Oh, and don't forget... For those that may not want to code as much, Flash Catalyst is also part of CS5 Web Premium, so I can take all of my designs from Photoshop, like I've got here, or Illustrator, and I can move those interfaces into Flash Catalyst and do it all without coding. Speaking of Photoshop, that's the third thing that I want to talk to you about. Now, there's a lot of great new features for web designers in Photoshop CS5, but one really jumps out at me. I mean, literally. It's called Reposé. You can see I have some text and images here that I want to give a little bit more pop to. 
And with a single click of a button, I can turn them into 